the bespectacled boy called for help and asked to let him go. Li Mong Ren asked if Siak Jia was not going to let them go. Li Mong Ren shouted that he had done nothing wrong and demanded that he be released before he decided to punch the bandit. Suk Jia said that Li Mong Ren shouldn't say such things when he's down on his head, and he recalled that he had repeatedly warned Li Mong Ren about the consequences of his misdeeds. The guy advised the bandit to hurry to free him while he was still behaving well. Siak Jia said that he warned that he would kill Li Mong Ren if he saw him wagging his tail in front of other men. And they agreed on this. Li Mong Ren shouted that he didn't do anything like that, but was just going to help Siak Jiha. Li Mong Ryong thought that it was only logical that Siak Jiha had misunderstood everything since he was caught at the hotel. But how could anyone think that he was with this bespectacled idiot? After all, he is not his type at all. Siak Jiha ordered the bespectacled man to lay out everything as it really was. The bespectacled boy screamed that he just stood there and didn't touch anyone. And Li Mong Ren came up to him and suddenly grabbed him by the groin and then he whispered something incomprehensible in his ear. The bespectacled man began to insist that he had never seen this guy before in his life and he was the first to approach him. Li Mon Ren tried to shut up the bespectacled man and said that he really came up first, but was not pestering at all, but just wanted to steal his checkbook. Sok Jia ordered his assistant to immediately get rid of this scoundrel and clarified that he meant Li Mon Ren. The guy screamed, what the hell is going on and did they really decide to kill him? Li Mong Ren began to demand that Sok Jia believe him. The bandit asked if Li Mong Ren would always make him nervous for the rest of his life, and it wouldn't be better for him to just get rid of the problem right now. Li Mong Ren shouted that Sok Jia was talking nonsense and if he was going to confess his feelings, he could have come up with something better. The guy promised that Sok Jia would definitely regret his actions and answer for all the rudeness. Li Mong Ren asked to be allowed to say one last thing and the bandit allowed it. Li Mong Ren stated that he loves Siak Jia no matter what he decides to do with him now. The bandit's assistant asked that perhaps he shouldn't do this, but Siak Jia ordered him to continue. The assistant said that that guy would freeze very quickly in the cold water and Siak Jia, listening, ordered to pull him out. The assistant shouted that he needed to quickly get the guy while he was still alive. But to everyone's surprise, the guy wasn't at the end of the rope and the assistant started yelling about who was checking the strength of the rope and where was this idiot. Sok Jia swore at his charges and decided that he needed to act himself. Li Mon Ren thought that all this was certainly an interesting story and how he could even get in touch with this psycho. And if you remember everything, this happened last year. Or rather in the winter of last year, their long and thorny journey began. Hai Young said that business attire would be best for this meeting and noticed one matching shirt that would suit her brother perfectly. She asked where Lee Mon Ren was because she had already searched him. Hai Young asked which shirt he liked best. The guy only replied, why make a big deal out of a mountain? Because this is just an acquaintance with her fiancé. Li Mon Ren asked his sister not to deviate from the topic and reminded her that she knew very well that he did not like this color. The guy said there was no need to go that far. Hai Young stated that she would still buy the shirt. Li Mon Ren asked if she could hear him at all, because he really didn't like that color. And maybe you need to choose something else. The guy asked how old her fiancé was. Hai Young replied that the groom was 36 years old and the guy exclaimed that apparently she was crazy to marry an old man. Hai Young asked not to say that because her fiancé is a very good person and Li Mon Ren herself will understand this when they meet. Li Mon Ren thought that this man could really be another strange guy, because his sister doesn't understand men at all. And now we all have to have dinner together. Li Mon Ren asked his sister to wait for him, because someone was persistently calling him. Crazy, but I'm not lying. So listen, I created a machine for time travel. It's true, we disrupted the fabric of space and time. The consequences of this were catastrophic, and should not be for everyone. The guy was surprised that Inspector Siak Jin Young was calling. The sister decided that in the meantime it was worth calling her fiancé and asking how he was doing. Lee Mon Ren asked his sister what happened. Hai Young asked her brother to pick up her purchases and explained that she urgently needed to go to the company because there were some problems there. The guy asked what happened there that she was sacrificing her only day off. Hai Young promised that she would only be with the company for a short time and would return home soon. Li Mon Ren offered to go with her, but his sister replied that there was no need to do this and that she could handle everything herself. Hai Young promised that she would immediately figure out how to cope, and Li Mon Ren should wait for her at home. Li Mon Ren thought that he had a strange feeling that they would not see each other again, although this had already happened more than once. The guy decided that it was still worth doing as his sister said and going home. The local grandmother asked if Li Mon Ren had gone shopping. The guy was surprised that she was sitting outside, because it was very cold outside. 
Li Mon Ren asked her to extend her hand as he had a gift for her. Granny was delighted with the mint candy, and the guy advised her to return home as soon as possible, because this way she could get sick. Granny asked Li Mon Ren not to leave and said that mafiosi had arrived here and were now in his house. Li Mon Ren just laughed in response and said that this simply could not happen. And again he advised Grandma to go home and not freeze, but she insisted on her own and warned of the danger. The guy ignored her words and was surprised when he received a call from an unknown number. My sister's voice came through the phone and she asked if Li Mon Ren had yet to get home. The guy asked why she was calling from someone else's number, but Hai Young demanded that he answer the question. The sister said that he should not go home and now was not the time to ask unnecessary questions. She said that she would send the necessary address, to which he should arrive immediately. Li Mon Ren froze in surprise and realized that there was really someone in his house. The thug appeared and asked if he was really Li Mon Ren. The guy, instantly realizing, replied that it was not him and he is just an acquaintance of his who came to chat. Li Mon Ren said that if he had time, he would come by later and ask to tell him about his visit. Suddenly, the neighbor guy asked Li Mon Ren where he had been before, because his grandmother was running and looking for him. Li Mon Ren mentally cursed his neighbor and realized that everything was ruined and he needed to run. The assistant informed Seok Jia that they managed to capture Li Mong. Leader asked if the prisoner had woken up yet. The assistant said that he was still alive and asked if Li Mon Ren managed to cheer up from the cold water. The assistant advised the boss to just shoot this guy, because he was nothing but problems. Li Mon Ren thought that he did not understand where he was at all and could not even count how many times he had already lost consciousness. Seok Jia said that we shouldn't kill this guy yet, because he is needed to get to Director Cho and his girl. Li Mon Ren asked the bandits why they all looked the same and were they really the main characters of the Three Little Pigs fairy tale. The bandit asked if they accidentally blew the guy's brains out while they were beating the crap out of him. The leader advised Li Mon Ren to immediately tell where his sister Hai Young was. The guy replied that he doesn't know where Hai Young is. But the bandit recalled that the last call that was on the guy's phone was from his sister, although from the left number, which she had long ago gotten rid of. The bandit promised to continue torturing Li Mon Ren until he reveals the location of his sister or at least tells him something useful. The bandit, who turned out to be even more important, ordered to stop the torture, because the boss would arrive soon and everyone should meet him. He advised the guy to start using his brains and warned that if this continues in the same spirit under the boss, he will be very happy. Li Mon Ren replied that everyone else needs to use their brains, because he really doesn't know where his sister is. And even if he continues to be tortured, he still won't be able to say it. Li Mon Ren thought that he felt as if he had returned from the other world and an unpleasant trembling was felt in his body. The guy remembered how he warned his sister that all this looked suspicious and how she managed to cross the path of these goats. And if he himself wants to stay alive and not die here, then he needs to get out as quickly as possible. Li Mon Ren decided that perhaps the sharp corner of a chair would help him and he would be able to get out of the trap. The guy thought that now it doesn't matter whether he dies or survives, but he must at least try to do something, because he must not give up under any circumstances. The bandit suggested simply finishing off Li Mon Ren, and then his sister would definitely appear at her brother's funeral. But the boss replied that it was unlikely that this plan would work, because if she found out that her brother was dead, then she would not stick her head out at all. At the same time, Hai Young knew in advance that we would be waiting for her brother at home, so it cannot be ruled out that she has her own informant in their ranks. If this is so, then we need to sort this out before tomorrow and find out who the traitor is. As for her brother, he is an arrogant boy who only remains silent. The sister indignantly reminded Sok Jia that today was the anniversary of his grandfather's death, and the whole family was already gathered, and he decided to appear only now in the evening. Sok Jia replied that he arrived immediately after the massage, and in general he should not have rushed, because his sister was waiting for him only to find out about the woman with whom her hubby ran away. Sok Jia advised his sister to stop thinking about it and start taking care of herself. The sister screamed that her brother was a complete idiot, and just a copy of his father. The father said that Siok Jia had finally arrived and suggested that they come in and sit down. Siok Jia said he was surprised by Jin Young's presence, and the father only noticed that it was difficult to get everyone together. My father asked how things were going with Director Cho. Siok Jia said that they managed to capture the brother of that same woman and now they should appear. The father was indignant that it was he who pulled this bastard out of the shit and made him a director, and he dared to do this to his daughter. That's why you should never help people. The father suggested that Seok Jin Young leave his position as a prosecutor, and it would be better if he returned to the family company and finally got married. 
Seok Jin Young replied that he was happy with everything for now and let brother Seok Jia get married first. The father reminded that Seok Jia already has a fiancé, and therefore Jin Young should follow his example. Jin Young said that he has an important call and needs to answer, but this is not a girl at all, so there is no need to be happy. Jin Young explained that he simply had not been able to contact his friend for a long time and therefore asked someone to find him. Sok Jia asked the name of that guy in the basement and realized that this was his brother's friend. The bandit said that Lee Mon Ren is a real scumbag and how did he manage to escape? Although this is no longer important and he now has nowhere to run, unless of course he was planning to jump from the roof to the bottom. Lee Mong Ren said that the bandit was right, and they can't kill him because they want to lure his sister out. But now they won't be able to touch him. The guy said that now he can turn everything upside down and disrupt their plans, and then their boss will be very unhappy when he returns. The bandit yelled that Lee Mon Ren couldn't jump down, but the guy still decided that he had to disrupt the plans of the bandits and take this step. Lee Mo Ren called the bandits idiots and offered to kiss his ass. The bandits were surprised by his determination and decided that he was completely sick for jumping from the roof. The bandits shouted that the guy was alive and he landed on a pile of garbage. The leader called the guys idiots and ordered to immediately catch up and capture the guy. Lai Mo Ren thought that he was already sick of these clowns and did not want to die in this damned place. And now it's not even clear what happened to my sister. The guy shouted to the bandits that they were pathetic cowards if they were afraid to jump from the roof, and if they weren't in a hurry, then it was time for him to go. The leader roared from such impudence and yelled at his subordinates, why the hell are they still standing there and not catching the guy? Lee Mon Ren decided that since he was lucky to escape, he simply had to survive now, and it's worth getting an advantage if you run to the mountain across the road. The guy thought that since he grew up in a mountain village, climbing the mountain at night would not be a problem for him. The bandits shouted after him for Lai Mo Ren to stop, because he would get worse. The guy thought that these goats were much faster than he expected. Lee Mon Ren yelled that they could go to hell, and he was not a dog at all to stop at their command. The guy was glad that there was a road ahead and all he had to do was run across and he would be saved. But suddenly the brakes squealed sharply and Lai Mon Ren felt the light of headlights. The bandits, barely breathing, said that they had finally caught up with the insolent man. Sok Jiha's driver asked the bandits what they were doing here. He decided that they had hit a moose and decided to check. Sok Dukhan said, is the driver really incapable of driving the car normally? The security guard asked why the boss got out of the car and asked if everything was okay with him. Siok Jia asked if they hit some kind of dog, but was informed that it turned out to be Hai Young's brother, who was previously reported. Suk Jia asked to shine a flashlight on the guy. Lai Ma Gren muttered something and tried to call his sister. Suk Jia asked what he wanted to say, but the guy decided that something needed to be done and bit the leader. The bandits were horrified by this and shouted that they needed to stop the boss's bleeding. The bandits began to curse Lee Mon Ren, but Sok Duhun said that he should be left, because they still wouldn't be able to find this bastard now. And that's enough chasing for today and no one else should get hurt again today. Sok Jia ordered that when they finally found this guy, they would have to bring him to him. But he immediately changed his mind and ordered to simply kill Lee Mon Ren. The girl asked Jin Young if he really couldn't contact Lee Mon Ren for several days. Jin Young replied that he couldn't reach him on the phone since he left the store. Jin Young, the girl asked if she was really Lee Mon Ren's sister. The girl said that she had not seen him since then. He Nai came to her last month. Then Hini said that she had met a good man and explained that she would no longer be able to visit her. And this spring they are planning to go abroad with Lee Mon Ren. Sister Monk said that that meeting caused great concern because Hai Young spoke as if they would never see each other again. And lately she had been having only nightmares, and so she decided to come to them. But what she saw in their house shocked her. Sister Monk said that if something happened to them, she would not be able to bear the grief. Jin Young suggested going out into the fresh air and calming down. Jin Young realized that on earth the Buddhist bracelet was Lee Mon Ren's amulet. Monk's sister asked the prosecutor what happened, but he said everything was fine. Jin Young thought what could have happened to Lee Mon Ren and if only he was alive. The assistant reported that student Lee Mong Ren was waiting for Jin Young in his office. The assistant explained that the guy was unlikely to be happy with her presence, and therefore he asked that the prosecutor be alone. In the meantime, she should get on with the report. Jin Young said that nothing could be done about it and suggested recording the entire conversation, and then drawing up a protocol. Jin Young asked how long the guy had been waiting for him and offered to drink hot chocolate, although he was not sure whether he liked such a drink. The prosecutor said that he roughly understood what happened, and in order not to drag out the case, he needed to ask the question directly. 
Jin Young asked if Lee Mon Ren really did it. After all, it is known that he left the group chat at 8.13, and the victim's watch stopped at the moment of the attack, at exactly 7 hours and 48 minutes. Jin Young offered to trust him and tell him everything. Lee Mong Ren said that he is sure that the prosecutor has already seen the documents of these scum. Their fathers are the heads of a famous law firm, a senior judge and an executive director of a conglomerate and he has no one except his older sister. The assistant turned to the prosecutor, but he did not immediately react and explained that he was thinking a little. The girl reminded that this concerns that student Lee Mon Ren, and she is very sorry for him, because the situation in which he found himself is simply terrible, and he doesn't even have parents and only has a sister, who had an accident the day before yesterday, and they can't even pay for the necessary operation. And this whole situation is sad, because now there is no one even to visit the guy. Lee Mon Ren asked what was the matter. Jin Young asked if the guy remembered him. Lee Mon Ren answered how he could forget the prosecutor who put him in this institution. The guy asked Jin Young not to come to visit him anymore, because he doesn't need anyone's pity, especially from the prosecutor. Jin Young said that he understood everything and would not come again. But Jin Young came later and congratulated Lee Mon Ren on his release. The guy was surprised by such a visit and recalled that he asked the prosecutor not to come to him. Jin Young said that he did not visit as Lee Mong Ren asked, but decided to wait until he was released. The guy asked not to joke or mock. Lee Mong Ren asked if the prosecutor had decided to become his bodyguard. Jin Young said that he did not come out of pity at all, but simply wanted to become a friend for Lee Mong Ren, and he suggested volunteering together. The guy replied that it was better for the prosecutor to do this alone. Jin Young asked why the guy had Buddhist rosary beads. Lee Mong Ren explained that he simply lives in the temple and is not a Buddhist at all. The ex-boyfriend asked why Lee Mong Ren suddenly became silent. The guy replied that he was just wondering where he could have lost his rosary. The ex-boyfriend asked what happened. Lee Mong Ren remembered how the strangers helped him, and after he came to his senses, after lying unconscious for the whole day, he hitchhiked to his ex-boyfriend's store. Lee Mon Ren remembered that the guy whose ear he bit off was most likely the leader of the bandits and that's bad. He said that if he gets caught again, then he is definitely finished. The ex-boyfriend suggested applying some ointment, because Lee Mon Ren's lips were too chapped. The ex asked me to tell him everything so that he could somehow help. Lee Mon Ren replied that it was better not to know about this. The ex-boyfriend was called because a client came. Lee Mon Ren thought that he could not tell everything to the prosecutor, and he himself would not fight off the bandits. The guy overheard someone wanting to buy a stun gun or a stun gun, and the ex-boyfriend was talking about the options. Lee Mon Ren decided that it would be useful to him and, ignoring the buyer, he took the shocker for himself. The bandit reported that they managed to track down Lee Mon Ren and he was at his friend's store. But when they got there, they were somehow able to escape earlier. The bandit apologized for his mistake and promised that this would not happen again, and that he would not let him down. Suk Jia replied that this was the last chance. The bandit offered to come, but Siok Jia replied that it was not necessary. After all, he doesn't like it when people crowd around him and wants to be alone. Sok Jia ordered to focus on capturing Lee Mon Ren. The guy said it's better not to make a sound, unless of course Siok Jia wants to get an extra hole in his neck. The leader just smiled in response. Lee Mon Ren praised the leader for being obedient and ordered him to leave from here. The guy asked why they were still standing and not moving and whether Sok Jia hadn't heard his order. Lee Mon Ren said that if he behaves like this, then things will be different. Sok Jia was stunned by the guy's touch, but Lee Mon Ren reminded him not to move. Otherwise, the leader may get stabbed in the neck if he continues to twitch. Lee Mon Ren asked why Sok Jia was looking at him like that, because it wouldn't help or if he liked the kiss and wants more. The guy decided that he needed to try a new acquisition and apologized in advance. Lee Mon Ren was pleased with the effect of the shocker and said that it was better to listen to him. The guy thought that the bandit shouldn't die after all and noticed that his face seemed very familiar, as if he had known him for a very long time. The ex-boyfriend said that we need to get out of here quickly. The two of them decided to kidnap Suk Jiha and were unpleasantly surprised at how heavy he turned out to be, especially if he was in a hurry. Lee Mon Ren said that the prisoner finally woke up and asked how he slept. The ex-boyfriend asked if Lee Mon Ren really thought well and wants to do what he planned, and who is this person they kidnapped anyway. Lee Mon Ren replied that he was not sure of anything and suggested that they quickly film everything they were planning to do. Suk Jiha wondered why the hell they were going to film. Lee Mon Ren asked to film everything as best as possible and so that the prisoner's face could be seen, because such a cute face must be used. The guy asked how Suk Jia was feeling and apologized for his inattention, because he should have removed the tape a long time ago. 
the leader demanded to untie him immediately. Li Mong Ryong said that Siok Jiha does not quite understand what situation he is in. And anyway, who is he to give orders here? Li Mong Ren explained that such a handsome guy shouldn't behave badly, otherwise things could get worse. Suk Jia screamed and demanded that his hands be taken off him. The leader began to insult Li Mong Ren and promised him a painful death. The guy said that this wouldn't work, because the prisoner was too noisy. And it's much better when Suk Jia's mouth is closed. Li Mong Ryong advised not to move, and if Suk Jia continues to misbehave, then he will be punished.